Whoa, what's going on? Hello? That is enough. All right, time to set the record straight. Oh, what's going on YouTube? My name is Chris and welcome to Immodernation. Many of you are here because you previously saw a video I did where I installed a USB thumb drive inside of a Wii U gaming console. And if you haven't seen that video, there's a card in the upper right hand corner with your name on it. Now, after that video came out, a lot of you were very vocal about it. Uh, complaints range from clickbait to this is not a mod to well, why not put an SSD inside instead? Actually, now that I think of it, none of you really asked for that. I just kind of made that one up. However, many comments did circulate around the fact that USB thumb drives are not intended to work like storage drives. They can't handle the number of read and write cycles that a traditional hard drive can. Now, I can tell you that after performing the mod, I played on my Wii U console for four hours every Wednesday for an entire year. In fact, I called it Wii U Wednesday and I streamed it on Twitch and YouTube. But that's not enough for you guys, is it? So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to install a solid state drive internally into your Wii U gaming console. But it's not a mod. No modifications were done whatsoever. Before taking the Wii U apart, our first order of business is going to be to format the solid state drive to the Wii U and transfer the games over from the flash drive. I'm connecting the solid state drive using this USB to SATA adapter. If you want to purchase this adapter, click on the link in the video description below. Upon plugging in the solid state drive, the Wii U should detect the drive and begin formatting. I know from previous experience that a two and a half inch form factor solid state drive is not going to easily fit into a Wii U console. So it's time to remove the actual board from the casing on the solid state drive. In order to remove the board from the casing, I'm gonna need to pry it open using a precision flathead screwdriver. It's a cheap solid state drive, so I'm not worried about breaking it. I'm actually more worried about stabbing my hand with the screwdriver. My recommendation is to start on one edge and work your way around the casing slowly. Once one of the edges is up, you should be able to remove the metal casing and expose the board. Where the f is the rest of my drive. If you're wondering where the rest of your solid state drive is that you paid for, this is it. Manufacturing these days is so efficient that 400 gigabytes can fit on a form factor as small as a micro SD card. And of course, companies save money by producing smaller boards, but in order to maintain the two and a half inch form factor, you get this. Based on the empty memory slot, you might have guessed that these boards are also used for the 512 gigabyte version. This is of course another cost saving measure for the company. My next task is going to be removing the flash drive from the Wii U console. I have all of my games stored on this drive from a previous video that I did. I'm removing this drive to replace it with the solid state drive, but if this is your first time doing the mod, you can skip this part. In order to transfer the games, I'm connecting both drives simultaneously to the Wii U, but not to the same side of the console. The Wii U would not detect both drives if they were plugged into the same USB hub. My guess is because of the way that the drives draw power from the USB ports. I learned from Nintendo that the Wii U can support up to two terabytes of storage per drive. This means that theoretically, the Wii U could support up to four terabytes of USB storage. I say theoretically because I've never tried it. I'll be moving everything from USB storage device 2 to USB storage device 1. Just as a test, I'm going to move Paper Mario over to the new solid state drive. I chose Paper Mario because the game files are smaller in size, which means that they'll transfer over faster, and I don't care if I lose my save data. Well, it looks like Paper Mario works, and now it's time to move everything over except for the downloadable streaming extensions. Does anyone really watch Hulu on Wii U? I mean, seriously. Put your hands down, you're lying. 82 gigabytes worth of games I'm moving over. This could take a while. While that's transfer, we have some time to talk. So this is the part in the video where I manage your expectations for this video and kind of explain a bit about the previous video that I did. I did actually expand the memory of the Wii U console. Just 
not in the way that you wanted me to. And in that first video, it was this USB thumb drive. Now, whether they are memory chips that are soldered directly to the main board, or it's a USB drive that is wired to a USB port, the storage is still connected to the main unit of the console one way or another. I did exactly what I said I was gonna do. Now, the Wii U doesn't use a hard drive like a PlayStation or an Xbox. The Wii U uses a soldered on memory chip called EMMC. Now this stands for Embedded Multimedia Card. Multimedia card is flash memory. It's essentially like an SD card here or like a thumb drive here. Now, I think in the first video, a lot of you wanted me to use a hot air station to remove the memory chips off of the main board and put larger uh, faster chips in their place. I'm here to tell you that that is not a route worth pursuing. It's likely that the EMMC has a file structure that is specific to that Wii U console and replacing it with another type of EMMC, it's not plug and play. But really, I'm going beyond the scope of this video, so I digress. But for a second, let's say that I could do that. Now, the question I'd have to ask myself is why? Why would I expand the EMMC memory it's already on the board itself. Now the EMMC memory that the Wii U console uses is Samsung. EMMC version 4.4.1, limited to speeds of up to 104 megabytes per second. But that's when it operates in 8-bit mode. As I've discovered from other sources, the Wii U actually runs in 4-bit mode. So cut that in half, that's about 52 megabytes per second. USB 2.0 can handle speeds of up to 60 megabytes per second. By wiring a solid state drive to my system, I'm actually limiting the transfer speed to that of the USB 2.0 port. What would normally be a couple hundred megabytes per second is now about 60 megabytes per second, and probably even slower than that. It's a good thing too because I didn't spend too much money on this solid state drive. By the way, if you'd like to get this solid state drive, link is in the video description below. Now that the file transfer is done, I'm disconnecting the flash drive from the Wii U console. Maybe I'll move this over to the Wii. Let me know in the comments section if you want to see me do a Wii homebrew mod. If you want to learn how to take the Wii U apart, you can watch my Wii U teardown video by clicking on the card in the upper right hand corner. Now that the Wii U is down to just the board, we can remove the USB adapter. I'm going to be replacing the USB thumb drive adapter with a mini USB type B cable. First I cut the head off, then I strip the insulation off the wires, and lastly I tin the wires individually. This next part's going to involve some soldering, which I realize might be new for you. If you need a beginner's soldering guide, you can watch my video by clicking on the card in the upper right hand corner. I removed the old wiring first. I then cleaned up the contacts with some flux paste and finally cleaned up the flux residue with a Q-tip and rubbing alcohol. You don't need to do this next part, but I made it a little bit easier on myself by adding a little bit more solder to each of the contacts. The old red, white, green, and black. Can you name that flag? because I can't. All right, so I realized that I skipped a couple of steps here. First, I stripped all the insulation off the USB mini type B cable, and two, I routed that cable through the back by the fan on the console. Looks like the lid is still not gonna fit, so it's time to make some changes. I'm gonna use a Phillips precision screwdriver to remove the aluminum heat sink for the optical drive. By the way, this screwdriver is from the iFixit Mako Precision 64-bit driver kit. I highly recommend this set. If you'd like to purchase one as well, there's a link in the video description below. It runs for about 28 bucks on Amazon. The aluminum heat sink is designed to keep the optical drive cool, but seeing as I don't use the optical drive very often, this is a non-issue. With all the screws removed, I can now lift the aluminum heat sink out. From a side profile, you can actually see the ridges on the aluminum that were not allowing the lid to close. Back to you in the studio. Unfortunately, that's still not enough to allow the lid to close. Our last choice is the optical drive. Two Phillips screws later and the top is off like a college co-ed after too many jello shots. 
I've installed the optical drive back into the console and you'll notice I've covered it with electrical tape so that the solid state drive doesn't ground to it. I'm using a piece of scotch double-sided extreme mounting tape to hold the drive in place. And I'm using an X-Acto knife to help me just peel it off. Double your pleasure, double your fun. I know you're not here for my singing, sorry about that. I did have to cut some holes in the tape in order for the drive to function properly. See, just like Nintendo intended. Nintendo intended. That's actually hard to say. And now we fit the top back on, but wait, not before mentioning I did some other custom routing of wires underneath the plastic. Now, please continue. So I know the question that's on a lot of your minds right now, how does the SSD perform compared to the internal storage of the Wii U console? The answer is, there's not really that big of a difference. Uh, I thought at first I noticed a difference in the boot time. It seemed like the, the games were loading up faster at the beginning, but the more that I played with the drive, I realized that it's not really that noticeable, especially if you compare the before and after. I think the reason why is because the power and the speed of the solid state drive is limited by the connectivity of the USB 2.0 port. You can't expect the same types of speeds for a solid state drive that you would have in say a laptop or a desktop computer, which are using SATA ports. And many other drives, including M.2 drives, use NVMe, uh, they use the PCI Express ports, and those drives are incredibly quicker. Unfortunately, we're limited by older technology. Keep in mind that the Wii U came out back in 2012, so a lot of the new technology that you see today was not available at the time. Really, the importance of this mod is expanded storage. This mod is perfect for people that like to transport their consoles a lot, and you don't want to risk the drive connecting or falling out or Heaven forbid you lose the actual drive. Now, would I recommend this mod to anybody? No, I probably would not. You could probably get by by just duct taping a drive to your system and calling it a day. However, I care a little bit more about the aesthetic. I wanna to try to preserve the natural look of the Wii U. And so I went through the trouble of opening it up and putting a drive inside of it. There's no performance to be gained. There's a lot of work for what this mod is. For me, this project was about pushing the possibilities of what I could do with the Wii U console. Does that mean in my next mod video, I'm gonna take out my heat gun and start removing the chips and replacing them with faster EMMC memory? No. Hell no. Thank you so much for checking out this video, and if you enjoyed it, make sure you slap that like button below and share the video. And while you're at it, why not join the Modern Nation and get subscribed by clicking on that subscribe button below. And hey, when you do, don't forget to click on the bell icon inside the button to be notified the moment that I release new videos. If you have any comments or questions, be sure to leave them for me in the comment section below, or why not hit me up on social media? I'd love to hear from you guys. And when you buy products from Amazon, consider using the affiliate links in the video description below. Thank you again so much for watching, and I will see ya!